Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Sarah Fenske. Nearly two years have passed since Eric Greitens resigned as Missouri governor. He'd barely served one year in office when he had to acknowledge an extramarital affair. That wasn't the end of the story. St. Louis Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner brought criminal charges against Greitens related to his treatment of the woman. Gardner alleged he'd taken a semi-nude photo without her consent. And she also later charged him with a felony related to his misuse of a donor list. In June 2018, Greitens resigned from office in exchange for her dropping the criminal case against him. Since then, Greitens has kept quiet until last week. And joining me today to discuss what the former governor has been up to and what that could mean for Missouri is St. Louis Public Radio reporter Jason Rosenbaum. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So Governor Greitens, former Governor Greitens, was again the talk of the town last week. Why? Because the Missouri Ethics Commission finally concluded a 20-month investigation into his campaign finance dealings. And the MEC fined him $178,000 or his campaign, but it specifically said that Greitens himself did no wrongdoing and didn't know about the reporting violations that that his campaign was dinged on. The other important thing to note as far as nuance goes is the headline is going to say $178,000, but really it's $38,000, which is pretty standard. Like if you get a fine... You can pay like a percentage of it. And if you don't get in trouble for two or three years, you're okay. Um, So naturally, because a lot of other charges were dismissed and because there was that line in there that said Eric Greitens committed no wrongdoing, didn't know about the reporting violations, Greitens kind of came out of his hole, so to speak. He doesn't live in a hole, but he's been kind of out of public view. Glad you could clarify that. Uh, and, and and said he was exonerated. His social media accounts on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, which had been dormant since 2018, lit up and talked about how he was exonerated and that there, the 2016 election was stolen from him. And there was even a line about like, you know, some people have asked me about revenge, but... I'm, I'm not actually going to undertake in revenge. He, and he also spoke to a couple of media outlets, including some more conservative ones. So the bottom line is a lot of this has a lot of this activity has prompted speculation about whether Greitens is going to primary Governor Mike Parson in 2020 or whether it's just to throw Parson off balance and, you know, prepare either for his upcoming book are prepare for a political campaign in 2022 or 2024. So two interesting theories here. One, that he could challenge uh, Governor Parsons as a Republican in the primary. The other, that he might be laying the groundwork for something else. What camp do you fall in? It's hard to say. I do have contacts still with people that used to work for Greitens. And without revealing who they are, the specific contents of the conversations I had, which were not on the record, I don't think that they see Greitens coming back in 2020, but there's really no love loss between Parson and his political operation and Greitens and his political operation. For a lot of people who are still within the Greitens orbit, they believe that a lot of the bad information about his 2015 activities, and that's the most euphemistic way I could put it, it was revealed because he froze the low-income housing tax credit, and the reveal was aimed at retaliation and driving him out of office and trying to get to reverse that decision. Now, that decision still hasn't been reversed in 2020, Mm -hmm. but I think a lot of that sentiment still holds true. It doesn't really wash away any of his actions. It doesn't really explain like why he did what he did in 2015 with with this woman Mm -hmm. um and i I, even if it was true that it it was revealed for retaliatory measures against his policies well maybe he shouldn't have engaged in those activities that allowed him to be vulnerable to those things but it did open up the door for his then lieutenant governor now they didn't run as a ticket they had won separate races but his lieutenant governor is now the governor yeah but what you're hearing from your sources is likely he's not planning to run this year. Uh, that's That would be my inclination, but things could change. Uh, filing opens, I think, next Tuesday, and it lasts until, I think, the end of March. 
So there'll be a, a month-long window if Greitens changes his mind or is planning the whole time to come back to to file. Do you yeah. think he has the popular support where he could mount a, a credible campaign here? You know, there's two lines of thought here. The one is no, because he doesn't have any of the Republican Party infrastructure behind him. That's firmly behind Governor Parson. But there are activists in Missouri Republican land that really do feel Greitens got a raw deal in 2018. And they don't like some of the things that Parson has done from a policy or political standpoint. So in that sense, if that activist support would translate into voter support in 2020 or 2022 mm-hmm. or 2024, or whenever, that may be his pathway to victory. But He it, ran it, as an outsider before. But, but, He'd be running as an outsider again. The issue is, like, this would be... 2016 was a pretty bloody primary. This would be like apocalyptic as far as acrimony. So he has to understand that by stepping back into the electoral arena now, all of the bad things that he admitted that he did in 2015 is going to are going to become back into the spotlight. And he has to decide whether he wants to put himself or his supporters, or his family through that again. It's also interesting to note that this investigation from the Missouri Ethics Commission, where he's now claiming full exoneration, this began with Republicans in Jefferson City. They filed this complaint against him. Yeah, and that was the most interesting thing that I noticed compared to how the Trump impeachment went. Eric Greitens was likely going to be impeached by the House of Representatives, whether he was thrown out of office by uh, a panel of judges remained to be seen. But that was a Republican-driven process. If he would have been impeached by the Missouri House, that would have been a supermajority Republican House impeaching him. It's a lot different from when Trump was impeached, but like no Republican except Mitt Romney or Justin Amash, if you consider him still a Republican, voted for him. So, I mean, that's another mark against him. But he could, I guess if he decided to come back, he'd be like, well, all these Republican insiders tried to push me out. I'm going to repel back into Missouri politics and 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 kick out these Jefferson City people down the stairs or something to that effect. It's quite a metaphor right there. He, he made up that metaphor a while ago, but I I it's been a while, so I'm paraphrasing it incorrectly. Now, the Ethics Commission reported that Greitens has spent $500,000 on legal fees since this investigation began. Um, do we know where that money came from? His campaign account. My understanding is actually a lot more than that. Um, I think his attorney said it was a million and a half dollars wow. over a period of time. Um, you are allowed to use campaign dollars to pay for like campaign related legal issues. That's not unusual, but I would imagine most of it came from there. And so for this new fine that he'll now have to pay to settle this $178,000, although it won't be that total, as you said, this again will come from the campaign committee. Almost certainly, because it's it's a violation from the campaign committee, not Crichton's personally. So they he does have $38,000 to spend. That's where that will come. Well, St. Louis Public Radio reporter Jason Rosenbaum, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com. St. Louis Public Radio's The Gateway gives you the day's news first thing every weekday morning. From the ever-evolving relationship between St. Louis City and County to developments in the Missouri and Illinois state capitals, and reports from our correspondents in Rolla and the Metro East. We put it all in a roughly 10-minute package with clarity and context. Download The Gateway wherever you get podcasts.